Hello, audience, and welcome to another book review here on the channel where I'm going to be discussing two books that I have very different thoughts on. But I've also been told that if I want to capture that younger audience and continue to grow my channel to the point where I can be buying Teslas for the Goblin Clan, I need to be appealing to younger audiences. So no, no, no cappage here. All, all facts go let's let's get into the 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 i'm gonna stop did you just have a stroke <laughs> i don't have either of these books so for the mad ship by robin hobb here is a ship look at look at that that's, that's better than having the I, I did this one on my Kindle, I'm sorry. But The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb is the second book in the Live Ship Trader series. And once again, Robin Hobb displays that she is one of the best character workers, as I've said before, in fantasy. Yet, there were a couple problems that have emerged here. Robin Hobb is an author who, putting it nicely, has a tendency to abuse the ever-living hell out of her characters, just putting them through the ringer on a level that few even come close to touching. And that was attempted here again with a new character named Cirilla, who once again is just Robin Hobb. Like, she just, she's gonna hit you with a boat in a literary sense of, Tragedy. I'm not doing words good today. But I wasn't made to care about this character enough to really be as invested as I have been before when Robin Hobb kind of starts putting her characters through the ringer. And on top of that, I just found myself not as compelled through the pages as I have been since probably the first uh, of the Farseer trilogy. This is not bad by any means. Those are just the criticisms I did have for the Mad Ship. If you're someone who's more narratively driven than character driven, I do maintain that Robin Hobb might be someone you don't view as fondly as I do because a lot of her books are almost entirely devoted to just making you understand these characters better and putting them through the paces. You're not always seeing the narrative just clip right along. The pace from Robin Hobb's pen uh, tends to be a bit more slow and marinating than that, which is not a bad thing, but it's gonna be something that brings out personal preference criticisms from quite a few people. But going beyond just character development, Robin Hobb, I'm just gonna get the ship out of the way, it's, it's too much. But beyond character development, Robin Hobb shines with relationships exquisitely, which I I think is one of the reasons why I enjoy Robin Hobb so much. She's just going to have these fantastic relationships, not only be really vivid in what they are, but in how they are changing through the extreme circumstances that are playing out throughout this book. I just want to throw in here that also uh, Mad Ship did a stupendous job of demonstrating how if you as a reader are connecting more and more with the cast, it becomes more enjoyable to then actually experience the story through their eyes, something that not everyone accomplishes flawlessly flawlessly, especially with later in the book when the truth of a situation is really coming out and how vile that feels, how wrong some stuff is. Because we know the characters, their reactions feel all the more visceral and it just all comes together and is the sign of a true master author. I, of course, am annoyed by the people that Robin Hobbs wants to be annoyed by and hate some of them, like Malta drove me absolutely insane in this book, but that's part of the process and it's deliberate and it's fantastic. I like Robin Hobb. The Captain Kit Kinnett. I wanted to say Kenneth, that's not right. Although we do have a Kyle, so I guess Kenneth isn't off the, but it's Kenneth. This is where Robin Hobb has really done the best job of making me as a reader feel conflicted about a character. Because, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of fall into the full moral spectrum. Now it's someone who you understand, you don't love, there's issues with their motivations and their execution and how they treat others. But it comes together again for someone who just feels so real. And that's, that's like the mastery of character I strive to hit someday. Being able to write someone 
who, as a reader, I look at them and I don't agree with their decisions, but you've written them so well, I totally understand why they do what they do. Combine that with some kick-ass world building and some interesting revelations throughout the story, and I think this is a solid sequel. I don't think it falls into middle book syndrome. The closest it has to that is it just doesn't feel like the narrative gets to where it needs to, to be fully as compelling as the first book in Live Ship Traders was for me. There's a lot that happened, but it just didn't have the same oomph through the pages. So it's not as good as the first book, Mad Ship of Mad Magic Ship, Ship of... Why can't I word today? But it's very enjoyable. And I'm feeling a very solid 7.5 out of 10. And it feels like it did something that did actually need to be done here, which is expand the world even more. I've been wanting more world building from Robin Hobb because what I've gotten so far is so uh, picturesque in, in a way, in terms of just, she really crafts a beautiful image when she wants to just really make you experience the environment she's setting it all in. But let's go ahead and talk about Iron Prince. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the second review here, and that is going to be Iron Prince, a self-pub lit RPG that has been exploding online from the author duo of Bryce O'Connor and Luke Chilomenko. So I was hesitant to get into this, but seeing just loads of hype put into this book, it made me really excited to give it a go. Like, holy crap, this one is just being like touted across the typical places I go to to look for books to pick up, especially in self-pub circles. And this is, without a doubt, the best lit RPG book I have read. Cut in. I'm seeing some pushback online for this book being fully labeled lit RPG, so I don't... It definitely has elements in there. It's going to be up to the individual reader. If you categorize it as that, y'all know how I feel about genre. It's about the book, not the genre. And this book, it's worth reading, so... I don't know, if you like lit RPG, it has some of those elements. Because not only are the mechanics of lit RPG fantastically built into the world, but this is just written on a level where the fun and characters are far more addicting than anything else I've seen from this subgenre. In premise, what we have is a world where there's essentially military-sponsored gladiator-style combat where celebrities are made and it's part of propaganda to get people invested in the war efforts and how the military makes money. And there's also technological enhancements going on with people, like exams, loads of tropes that are familiar to people of sci-fi and fantasy that are heavily used here, but quite effectively. A lot of those tropes I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I'm not going to let that really affect the review too much because I can identify when they're well done. There's a cast of characters that I found to be very satisfactory. We are following a lot of what you would assume based on the premise you've heard throughout this story. It reminded me a lot of Ender's Game in some ways, which I quite unpopularly didn't love, but I, okay, I'm gonna get crap for this, preferred this execution of some of the ideas you see in Ender's Game that were brought into here. I just don't like Ender's Game. Fight me, I know I'm gonna get sh for saying that. But our main character, Radon Ward, is taken note of because he stands out and he's special and more tropes. But where this book is going to win a lot of people over is how visceral a lot of the action is written. And I hate to say this, but I have to because realistically, especially for self-pub, it's quite well written. Fortunately, though, in the second half, it feels like the authors became a bit too indulgent, especially with some dialogue that came across clunky and wasn't entirely needed. I just would have liked to seen a more thorough edit, especially in that last half. And the action became descriptive to a point that while it never wasn't well done, I was just kind of like, move on. I, I get it. I, it's great action, but I'm done. Younger audiences, though, I think will enjoy this more. I've just, as I've gotten older, been not as compelled by well-done action. I kind of want to get back to the story and character development, and that leads me to another criticism. While the characters, I will maintain, are quite well realized, I wanted to see more development, which usually in first books I'm pretty forgiving on. But with the length of this story, there should have been some more changes in growth outside of just powering up through the systems we see put into place. And there is a good amount of that. Powering up is the kind of character development that really gets your gears moving. Fantastic. But it just felt like on an emotional and relationship level, things remained a bit too stagnant for my tastes. But the story and world are compelling. And while I've seen many of the narrative motivators done a lot before because they are tropes, there was something about the personality of this world that felt 
very different because there's this layered in like propaganda angle with everything else that just comes together uh, extremely well. I'm asked about lit RPG a lot, even though it's not something I particularly look out for, but this is now going to be my default recommendation because aside from those few faults that I think many people will not share, this was solid and so much fun. I want to also end this with one final compliment for the writing style and world building uh, approach, which is not to be overly handholdy, which I have found many books that kind of fall into this uh, style of writing to fall victim to. Instead, the author duo has come together to really just put a lot of smaller details in there, especially about like how people view each other now that like bodies are enhanced and all this stuff without being explicit to explain how the cultural changes of this technology being so woven into society would affect day-to-day -day life. You, the reader, need to do the work to figure out, oh, that's why this person is being referred to as scrawny or something like that when, okay, they definitely wouldn't be now. Like that's actually something that I really enjoy because it makes me feel smart as a reader to go like, I made the connection. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there. If this book had been edited a bit more, cut down a smidge, it would have been really a lot higher for me. But for right now, I'm feeling a very solid 6.5 out of 10, but I'm aware many people will be far more hype on this because it's a damn good time. But that's just my review of Iron Prince and the Mad Ship. Maybe two of the most different books I've put together in a review for a while. But let me know in the comments down below if you are excited for either of these or you plan to pick them up. And of course, if you'd like to, affiliate links right down there. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace!